Section eleven of Hero and Leander. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Hero and Leander by Christopher Marlowe and George Chapman. Section eleven. The fifth Sestiad, part two. The tale of Terras continued bright eucharis who was by all men said the noblest fairest and the richest maid of all the athenian damsels hymen loved with such transmission that his heart removed from his white breast to hers but her estate in passing his was so interminate for wealth and honour that his love durst feed on naught but sight and hearing nor could breed hope of requital the grand prize of love nor could he hear or see but he must prove how his rare beauty's music would agree with maids in consort therefore robbed he his chin of those same few first fruits it bore and clad in such attire as virgins wore he kept them company and might write well for he did all but eucharis excel in all the fair of beauty yet he wanted virtue to make his own desires implanted in his dear eucharis for women never love beauty in their sex but envy ever his judgment yet that durst not suit a dress nor past due means presume of due success reason gat fortune in the end to speed to his best prayers but strange it seemed indeed that fortune should a chaste affection bless preferment seldom graceth bashfulness nor graced it hymen yet but many a dart and many an amorous thought enthrilled his heart ere he obtained her and he sick became forced to abstain her sight and then the flame raged in his bosom oh what grief did fill him sight made him sick and want of sight did kill him the virgins wondered where diaisha stayed for so did hymen term himself a maid at length with sickly looks he greeted them tis strange to see gainst what an extreme stream a lover strives poor hymen looked so ill that as in merit he increased still by suffering much so he in grace decreased women are most one when men merit least if merit look not well love bids stand by love's special lesson is to please the eye and hymen soon recovering all he lost deceiving still these maids but himself most his love and he with many virgin dames noble by birth noble by beauty's flames leaving the town with songs and hallowed lights to do great ceres eleusina rites of zealous sacrifice were made a prey to barbarous rovers that in ambush lay and with rude hands enforced their shining spoil far from the darkened city tired with toil and when the yellow issue of the sky came trooping forth jealous of cruelty to their bright fellows of this under heaven into a double night they saw them driven a horrid cave the thieves black mansion 
where weary of the journey they had gone their last night's watch and drunk with their sweet gains dull morpheus entered laden with silken chains stronger than iron and bound the swelling veins and tired senses of these lawless swains but when the virgin lights thus dimly burned oh what a hell was heaven in how they mourned and wrung their hands and wound their gentle forms into the shapes of sorrow golden storms fell from their eyes as when sun appears and yet it rains so showed their eyes their tears and as when funeral dames watch a dead corse weeping about it telling with remorse what pains he felt how long in pain he lay how little food he ate what he would say and then mix mournful tales of others deaths smothering themselves in clouds of their own breaths at length one cheering other call for wine the golden bowl drinks tears out of their eyn as they drink wine from it and round it goes each helping other to relieve their woes so cast these virgins beauties mutual rays one lights another face the face displays lips by reflection kissed and hands hands shook even by the whiteness each of other took but hymen now used friendly morpheus aid slew every thief and rescued every maid and now did his enamoured passion take heart from his hearty deed whose worth did make his hope of bounteous eucharis more strong and now came love with proteus who had long juggled the little god with prayers and gifts ran through all shapes and varied all his shifts to win love's stay with him and make him love him and when he saw no strength of slight could move him to make him love or stay he nimbly turned into love's self he so extremely burned and thus came love with proteus and his power to encounter eucharis first like the flower that juno's milk did spring the silver lily he fell on hymen's hand who straight did spy the bounteous godhead and with wondrous joy offered it eucharis she wondrous coy drew back her hand the subtle flower did woo it and drawing it near mixed so you could not know it as two clear tapers mix in one their light so did the lily and the hand their white she viewed it and her view the form bestows among her spirits for as colour flows from superficies of each thing we see even so with colours forms emitted be and where love's form is love is love is form he entered at the eye his sacred storm rose from the hand love's sweetest instrument it stirred her blood's sea so that high it went and beat in bashful waves gainst the white shore of her divided cheeks it raged the more because the tide went gainst the haughty wind of her estate and birth and as we find in fainting ebbs the flowery zephyr hurls the green-haired hellespont broke in silver curls gainst hero's tower 
but in his blast's retreat the waves obeying him they after beat leaving the chalky shore a great way pale then moist it freshly with another gale so ebbed and flowed in eucharis's face coyness and love strived which had greatest grace virginity did fight on coyness side fear of her parents frowns and female pride loathing the lower place more than it loves the high contents desert and virtue moves with love fought hymen's beauty and his valour which scarce could so much favour yet allure to come to strike but fameless idle stood action is fiery valour's sovereign good but love once entered wished no greater aid than he could find within thought thought betrayed the bribed but incorrupted garrison sung men. there those songs begun and love was grown so rich with such a gain and wanton with the ease of his free reign that he would turn into her roughest frowns to turn them out and thus he hymen crowns king of his thoughts man's greatest empery this was his first brave step to deity home to the mourning city they repair with news as wholesome as the morning air to the sad parents of each saved maid but hymen and his eucharis had laid this plot to make the flame of their delight round as the moon at full and full as bright end of section eleven Recording by Martin Giessen in Hazelmere, Surrey.